Hello everyone, I'm Alex, and you probably all know me already from our Caspa Specials episodes, but today we will have a new format, a kind of mini-series about the mega-long podcast you might have tuned in already. Oh yeah, the one with Yonatan Sompolinsky and Vlad Kostea, right? Exactly. It was a marathon session, an incredible deep dive into Caspa, Bitcoin, and the future of crypto. And folks, we have something absolutely crazy for you today. If you were following the space, you might have seen it. Caspa founder Yonatan Sompolinsky sat down with our host Vlad Kostea for a marathon, an absolutely epic seven and a half hour deep dive into everything Caspa, Bitcoin and the future of crypto. <laughs> it was a mind bending conversation, but let's be real. Who has time for all that? Well, we do. We've gone through the entire marathon session and we're breaking it down for you. We're launching a special mini-series to pull out the most important game-changing insights so you don't have to. That's right. And we're starting today with the most fundamental question of all. Why does Caspa even exist? With thousands of crypto projects out there, what problem was so big that it needed a whole new approach? To understand this, we're drawing from a fantastic in-depth interview between the podcast host Vlad Kostea and Caspa's founder, Yonatan Sompolinsky. Exactly. With thousands of crypto projects out there, it's easy to get lost in the noise. But Caspa's origin story is fascinating because it starts with trying to solve one of the oldest problems in crypto, Bitcoin's speed limit. Exactly. So let's start at the beginning. Bitcoin. We all know it's the original, the OG. It works on a system called a blockchain, which is literally a chain of blocks. A new block of transactions is added roughly every 10 minutes. And that 10-minute rule is there for a very good reason. Security. But it's also a huge bottleneck. Think about it. Waiting 10 minutes for a transaction to even get into a block, and then maybe an hour for it to be considered truly secure, isn't ideal for, say, buying a cup of coffee. For sure. And here's the key problem that Yonatan and his advisor were looking at years ago. What happens if you try to speed Bitcoin up? Let's say you make it one block every minute or every second. The network starts to break down in a way. Break down how? Well, you get something called orphan blocks. Imagine two different Bitcoin miners solve the puzzle to create the next block at almost the exact same time. The network can only accept one of them to continue the chain. The other block, even though it was valid and had work put into it, gets thrown away. It becomes an orphan. Ah, so all that energy and computing power is just wasted. And if you speed up the network, this happens a lot more often, right? Because there's less time for a new block to travel across the globe before another one is found. Exactly. More speed equals more orphans, which means more wasted energy and weaker security. This was the puzzle Yonatan set out to solve. In the interview, he mentioned that his initial work was purely academic. He needed a project to transition from mathematics to computer science. He and his advisor asked, what happens when you increase the block rate of Bitcoin? And this led to his first major idea. The Ghost Protocol. This is the protocol that got him cited in the original Ethereum white paper, which is a pretty big deal. So what was Ghost? Ghost was a clever first attempt to deal with those orphan blocks. Instead of just following the single longest chain, the Ghost Protocol said, let's look at the entire tree of blocks, including all the forks and orphans. The rule became, choose the path that has the heaviest weight, meaning the side of the fork that has the most total blocks branching off it. Okay, so it's like looking at a tree, and instead of just following the tallest, skinniest branch, you're looking for the thickest part of the tree with the most leaves and branches. You're acknowledging that all that other work happened and giving it some weight. That's a perfect analogy. But here's the interesting part. Yonatan was very honest in the interview, saying their first attempt was flawed. He said, we erroneously claimed that Ghost can scale to any block rate. He even told a story about meeting Gregory Maxwell of Bitcoin Core, who immediately pointed out an attack on the protocol. So Ghost was a step in the right direction, but it wasn't the final answer. This is where the idea for Caspa really begins to take shape, right? The thinking evolves from trying to better pick a winning chain to asking a more radical question. Exactly. The next logical step was, what if we don't throw any blocks away? What if we find a way to include all of them? This is the shift from a blockchain to something different. A block DAG. DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. That sounds super technical. It does, but the concept is simpler than it sounds. If a blockchain is a single file line, a block DAG is more like a family tree or a web. Blocks can have more than one parent, so when two blocks are mined at the same time, 
Instead of one becoming an orphan, the next block can just point to both of them. Okay, so you're weaving all the blocks together into this big, messy-looking graph. But if it's not a straight line, how do you know which transactions happened first? How do you create a clear, ordered history? That's the million-dollar question, and it's the core innovation of CASPA. As Yonatan put it, the innovation is not the DAG structure itself. That's a known concept in computer science. The real innovation is the new consensus rule for ordering all those blocks. He described CASPA as a generalization of the Bitcoin protocol. So it takes Bitcoin's core principles but applies them to this more complex structure. The goal is to get the best of both worlds. You can create blocks incredibly fast, like one per second or even faster. But because no blocks are orphaned, all of that work contributes to the network's security. Precisely. Yonatan said the key is creating an ordering that is guaranteed to converge across all nodes. This allows Casper security to not deteriorate as you increase the block rate. You solve the speed versus security trade-off that plagues traditional blockchains. So, bringing it all together, the vision for Casper was to create something that was proof of work, had a fair launch like Bitcoin, but was fundamentally different in its structure to achieve massive scalability. Yes, and it wasn't just about payments. Yonatan mentioned in the interview that for him, the bigger vision is to merge the two pillars of crypto, money and finance. He envisions Caspa as having a solid sound money monetary base, just like Bitcoin, but also being fast and efficient enough to support a whole ecosystem of decentralized finance, or DeFi, natively. So to recap for everyone listening, Caspa exists because Bitcoin, for all its strengths, has a built-in speed limit. Trying to speed it up breaks its security model. Jonathan Sumbolinski's academic research into this problem led him from the Ghost Protocol, a better way to handle orphan blocks, to the block DAG, a new structure that eliminates orphan blocks entirely. And the ultimate vision was to build a proof-of-work system that could scale to handle global demand for both payments and finance, achieving high speeds without compromising on security. In essence, it's an attempt to generalize Bitcoin's consensus to build a faster, more inclusive network. A perfect summary. It's a fascinating journey from a simple academic question to a full-fledged crypto network. That's all the time we have for today. Join us next time as we dig deeper into how the journey of Yonatan, or how BlockDAG actually work, and much more. Thanks for tuning in. And a big shout out to Vlad Kostea for hosting that marathon session, and to Yonatan Sampolinsky for sharing his insights. It was so amazing to hear directly from the founder about the vision and technical brilliance behind Caspa. See you next time on Caspa Mini Series.